So this recipe means that I can only do things which upon the doing glorify, dignify, and give joy to me. And I, when prophesying for another, projecting another's behavior, I should only prophesy or project such things which, when expressed, glorify, dignify, and give joy to that other. Welcome back to another episode of Daily Neville. I am your host, Josiah Brandt. Daily Neville is all about breaking down the teachings of Neville Goddard, making them easy to understand, easy to digest, easy to apply in 20 minutes or less. Usually, usually 20 minutes or less. I did have to trim this episode a little bit to try to get it closer to 20 minutes. If you're interested in the full extended uncut edition and all of the gems contained therein, I invite you to check out the channel membership at the Daily Neville version and higher, you do get access to extended cut editions of episodes of Daily Neville. Today, we're continuing with Neville's famous book, Your Faith is Your Fortune. And this is a very interesting chapter. Of course, I could say that for all of the chapters of this amazing book, but this chapter in particular has a very intriguing aspect to it. And that is because this chapter is all about the esoteric secret, the sacred secret of the 12 disciples. Now, many of us were taught in traditional sense, so the 12 disciples were men who lived around the time of Jesus. And in this case, Neville is going to explain for us, he's going to reveal for us what the 12 disciples represent in terms of the esoteric meaning, meaning the hidden or inner meaning. And in this case, he's going to describe each of the 12 disciples in regards to the quality of mind that they represent. Now, when you understand that these disciples are qualities of mind, it gives the New Testament in particular the Gospels, a whole different frame of reference. You have a whole different context for the stories that are told about these apostles and what they represent when you understand that they are qualities of mind. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in. The Twelve Disciples And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Matthew 10, 1. The twelve disciples, Neville writes, represent the twelve qualities of mind which can be controlled and disciplined by man. If disciplined, they will at all times obey the command of the one who has disciplined them. These twelve qualities in man are potentials of every mind. Undisciplined, their actions resemble more the actions of a mob than they do of a trained and disciplined army. All the storms and confusions that engulf man can be traced directly to these 12 ill-related characteristics of the human mind in its present slumbering state. Until they are awakened, and disciplined, they will permit every rumor and sensuous emotion to move them. An amazing opening paragraph here. We're going to start right there. These 12 qualities, which we're going to explore, anthropomorphized into human beings, in the form of these 12 disciples, these 12 qualities are potentials of every mind. Now, we're just at the very beginning of this chapter, but I'm already telling you, this is a total game changer. And we're going to go into it a little bit in this episode of Daily Neville. But this idea of disciplining the very various attributes of our mind, disciplining the various characteristics of our creative power, and getting all aspects of our being to work together towards a common objective is exactly what my YouTube mentorship is all about. In the members area of my YouTube mentorship, I go into way more detail about this. I have a whole content plan in regards to this idea. So if you see the benefit of honing and training and in training the qualities of your creative essence towards a common objective, in my mind, this is what ignites potential on a whole new level. And when I explore 
how far can we go with these ideas? Exactly what is possible for us to create a essence that we are embodied in human? A lot of it comes down to, are we able to do this? Are we able to hone and train these qualities and characteristics of our minds towards an objective? We're going to find out and invite you to join me on this journey. But for now, let's continue with exploring these esoteric secrets of the 12 disciples. Continuing with Neville's words. Until they are disciplined and awakened, they will permit every rumor and sensuous emotion to move them. Rumor and sensuous emotion. When you're ungrounded as a creator and, and you, you, know, you have an objective and you're moving towards it, but you're not grounded in it where you know at a very deep core fiber of your being level who you are and what your state is and, you, and you're able to trust in that state, if you're not there yet, Rumors will move you. Sensuous emotions will move you. Sensuous emotions is such a, a beautiful way of saying it. Someone, you know, you, you have your mind focused on objective and then someone says something that flies in the face of that. If you're ungrounded, undisciplined, that's going to knock you off. You're going to be like reeling from a blow. But when you know who you are and your qualities of mind are disciplined, honed and trained, these attributes, people can say anything. It doesn't even affect you. It, it just doesn't even really enter your conscious awareness. It just moves right through and past you and beyond. And it has no effect on you. You're not swayed by sensuous emotions or rumors. When these 12 are disciplined, Neville writes, and brought under control, the one who accomplishes this control will say to them, hereafter, I call you not slaves, but friends. He knows that from that moment, each acquired disciplined attribute of mind will befriend him and protect him. The names of the 12 qualities reveal their natures. These names are not given to them until they are called to discipleship. The names are Simon, who later was surnamed Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas. The first quality to be called and disciplined is Simon, or the attribute of hearing. This faculty, when lifted to the level of a disciple permits only such impressions to reach the consciousness as those which his hearing has commanded him to let enter. No matter what the wisdom of man might suggest or the evidence of his senses convey, if such suggestions and ideas are not in keeping with that which he hears, he remains unmoved. So Simon, Neville is saying, is the guard, the guard at the door of your ears. And this guard is commanded to check the ID, check the ID of anyone who is attempting to enter the door of my ears, check the identity. And if the identity is not in alignment with that which I'm permitting to enter, he doesn't get in doesn't get in because the guard at the door will turn them away. Doesn't matter the wisdom of man. Wisdom of man would say, oh, well, I've never seen that happen. It's not possible. Or, well, logically, based on X, Y, and Z, that's probably not going to happen. Those people don't make it in. They don't make it past Simon, who is the guard of your hearing. They don't make it into the inner chamber. This one, Simon, has been instructed by his Lord and made to understand that every suggestion he permits to pass his gate will, on reaching his Lord and Master, his consciousness, leave its impression there, which impression must in time become an expression. 
The instruction to Simon is that he should permit only dignified and honorable visitors or impressions to enter the house or consciousness of his Lord. No mistake can be covered up or hidden from his master. For every expression of life tells his Lord whom he consciously or unconsciously entertained. When Simon, the guard at the door of your hearing, by his works, proves himself to be a true and faithful disciple, then he receives the surname of Peter, which means the rock, the unmoved disciple, the one who cannot be bribed or coerced by any visitor. He is called by his Lord, Simon Peter, the one who faithfully hears the commands of his Lord, and besides which commands he hears not. Another way of saying this is Simon Peter, the one who allows the distinguished and honorable guests to enter and turns away the dishonorable or undesired guests. Here's the commands of his Lord, and here's not any other commands. It is this Simon Peter who discovers the I am to be Christ. For his discovery is given the keys to heaven and is made the foundation stone upon which the temple of God rests. Buildings must have firm foundations, and only the disciplined hearing can, on learning that the I am is Christ, remain firm and unmoved in the knowledge that I am Christ, and beside me, there is no Savior. So that's the first disciple, Simon, who upon proving himself is named Simon Peter. So Simon, the hearing, Peter, the rock. So when the hearing is firm like a rock and can be trusted, it's Simon Peter. And that's the first quality. It also translates to faith in oneself, because if you have perfect faith in yourself, you're not going to allow any sensuous emotions or rumors to knock you off your path. You're not going to allow it to uproot your awareness of self as source. Now we're going to talk about the second disciple. And Neville writes, the second quality to be called the discipleship is Andrew, or courage. As the first quality, faith in oneself, is developed, it automatically calls into being its brother, courage. Faith in oneself, which asks no man's help, but quietly and alone appropriates the consciousness of the quality desired, and in spite of reason, or the evidence of his senses to the contrary, continues faithful, patiently waiting in the knowledge that his unseen claim, if sustained, must be realized, such faith develops a courage and strength of character that are beyond the wildest dreams of the undisciplined man whose faith is in things seen. What a statement. The faith develops a courage and strength of character that are beyond the wildest dreams of the undisciplined human whose faith is in things seen. There are many human beings on planet Earth today who are indisciplined in the way that their faith is in things seen. And we are called to be like Jesus, who called things as seen that were not seen, and they became seen. The faith, Neville writes, of an undisciplined man cannot really be called faith. For if the armies, medicines, or wisdom of man in which his faith is placed be taken from him, his faith and courage go with it. But from the disciplined one, the whole world could be taken, and yet he would remain faithful in the knowledge that the state of consciousness in which he abides must, in due season, embody itself. This courage is Peter's brother Andrew, the disciple, who knows what it is to dare, to do, and to be silent.
Andrew, courage, who knows what it is to dare, to do, and to be silent. Continuing with Neville's words. The next two who are called are also related. These are the two brothers, James and John, James the just, the righteous judge, and his brother John, the beloved. Justice, to be wise, must be administered with love, ever turning the other cheek, and at all times returning good for evil, love for hate, nonviolence for violence. The disciple James, symbol of a disciplined judgment, must, when raised to the highest office of supreme judge, be blindfolded, that he may not be influenced by the flesh, nor judge after the appearances of being. Disciplined judgment is administered by one who is not influenced by appearances. The one who has called these brothers to discipleship continues faithful to his command to hear only that which he has been commanded to hear, namely the good. The man who has this quality of mind disciplined is incapable of hearing and accepting as true anything, either of himself or another, which does not, on the hearing, fill his heart with love. And that, my friends, is the test. That is the test. That is the standard, the golden standard. The one who has this quality of mind disciplined is incapable of hearing and accepting as true anything, whether of themselves or any other person, which does not, on the hearing, fill the heart with love. Neville continues, These two disciples, or aspects of the mind, are one and inseparable when awakened. Such a disciplined one forgives all men for being that which they are. He knows as a wise judge that every man perfectly expresses that which he is, as man conscious of being. He knows that upon the changeless foundation of consciousness, all manifestation rests. That changes of expression can be brought about only through changes of consciousness. This is so rich. This is so rich. We allow perfect freedom to the expression of all, perfect freedom of choice to all. We allow others to choose exactly how they're going to express themselves. And nevertheless, we remain watchful to ensure that we ourselves prophesy, meaning project, foresee, cast out as an enchantment upon others, and also do ourselves only such things which, as we do them, or as we speak them, or as we prophesy them, glorify, dignify, and give joy to the expressor, which is ourselves. So, this recipe means that I can only do things which, upon the doing, glorify, dignify, and give joy to me. And I, when prophesying for another or projecting another's behavior, I should only prophesy or project such things which, when expressed, glorify, dignify, and give joy to that other. This is the gold standard of what it means to be the highest form of human. Whole new level to the state of being known as Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ and his 12 disciples. Jesus Christ and the 12 qualities of mind that are disciplined by the one who is in the state of Jesus Christ. And those are the secrets that we're revealing in this moment. For this episode, this has been quite a lot that we've dug into. These first several qualities of mind. We're going to run through them briefly to review. Simon Peter, the rock who hears only what is allowed or commanded to hear. He's the guard, the door of your hearing. And then there is Peter's brother, Andrew, the disciple who knows what it is to dare, to do, and to be silent because Peter's brother, Andrew, is courage. And then we have James, 
Disciplined Judgment, and John the Beloved. And we know here that James and John command us to be watchful always, that what we ourselves do and prophesy, whatever it is that we're doing and prophesying regarding, when that is expressed, it glorifies, dignifies, and gives joy to the expressor. We're going to leave it there for this episode of Daily Neville, and I invite you to sit and meditate upon these qualities of mind. In the next episode of Daily Neville, we're going to continue with the remaining disciples and explore the qualities of mind that each one relates to. Until then, imagine wisely, my friends, and I'll see you all in the next. 